But as, as Philip said, I, I'm, I'm really thankful that I, I, I have the opportunity to, to give a talk for you <clears throat> now here today because it's really uh, kind of two things on which I fall in love something like 25 years ago was, was uh, the attempt to understand how people learn, how they become better people, how do they develop, how do they change. More like a psychology of education point of view, how, how people may even become wise how the process is. And on the other hand, then when the web came in the early 1990s, I, I saw it as a, as a sign of meet, or being a metamedia, as, as Philip being going, calling computers, that, <clears throat> that computer is not, uh, you can approach it not from the computing point of view, doing the math, but also from the media point of view, that, that, that computer is able to simulate, emulate all the existing medias plus mixing them. <clears throat> and if we think that Marshall McLuhan, a famous media scholar, uh, her way of thinking media, you could also say that uh, a sandbox is a media and a computer may simulate or emulate the sandbox as well. So the me uh, computer as a, as a me meta media and then on the other, other hand the, the interest of, of how people change, how do they develop being, <clears throat> being what I've been working on. Um, I thought that I, I, I talk a bit of the past, where, where we are coming with the field of, of using these computers or the metamedia in, in, in teaching and learning, and then I predict the future. It's, it's nice that this will be in YouTube, so my grandchildren will have a good time laughing for me when I've been predicting the future, which never happened. Uh, <clears throat> how many of you have seen this picture? Few. It's been going around, especially with the people interested in using, using technology and, and media in, in teaching and learning. This is a picture from the year 1901, uh, made in Paris for the, for the, for the uh, World Fair. And, and you can see it's a, it's a, it's, it says year 2000 up there. It's a prediction how teaching and learning will happen in the year 2000. And you see there's the professor uh, feeding books and someone <clears throat> doing something, scanning them or, or whatever, and they end up to be audio and, and, the, and the students are, are listening the, the information, the knowledge coming from the books. And some people, been, been, when this was someone scanned this and it, it, it started to go around in, on, on internet, someone was saying that, wow, that's like a Wikipedia that is feeding all the information of the world in one place. And, and actually, 2006, in my research group, we did something which was called Audio Wikipedia. And, and, and it was working so that you send a search term as a text message to the Wikipedia with your mobile phone. And then the Wikipedia is giving you a call and you hear the article which you were searching. So you send Helsinki and then the Wikipedia, the computer is reading the Wikipedia articles for you. So that was very close to this kind of uh, learning thing. <clears throat> This is a real thing. This is by, by B.F. Skinner, world famous psychologist. I guess most of you have heard about him. Uh, <clears throat> was working in a Harvard University and, and, and was building this teaching machine, which was an idea of, of programmed learning, which means that, that, that uh, practically this was a, a system which came questions and then the students were answering yes or no, and it was repeating things again and again. So, Finally, the student could be seen that, that, that he or she learned the, the topics. Of course, the Skinner was doing his research mainly with the rats and later only with the kids. And, and his way of thinking about learning was extremely simple, uh, behavioristic idea of, 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 of this trial and error, which has been discussed <clears throat> quite a lot today. I took another historical picture, which, which is quite amazing. This is from the year 85, 86 from Russia, uh, from a small village school where they were having the computers. And, and the most interesting thing with this is the, the, the propaganda up there, which my Estonian professor friend who, who speaks Russian and, and is a bit elder and been teaching this time in, in the Soviet Russia was saying that that was a, something which came from the communist party to every school in Soviet Union. And it says up there that programming is a second literacy. The first one gives you knowledge. 
the second one allows you to implement it in practice. I think that's quite an interest, interest way of, of thinking about, but there's two kind of literacy programming and then, then what we know, reading books or, 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 or yeah, reading books practically. And, and then if you combine these two things, is the, the, you get the information or you understand certain things, and then with the programming, a bit like in a sandbox, you can build things. Uh, I've been defining kind of the, the history of, of using computers in teaching and learning to, to five stages. And, and I think you can see that there's the drill and practice, the Skinner machine, which by the way was not a computer, it's a mechanical machine, but, but <clears throat> that idea has been lately, lately used a lot in, in, in using computers in teaching and learning. And then the other hand from the programming point of view that children or, or the people can manipulate things and build things uh, themselves. <clears throat> Later in the, in, the, in the history, I would say that when the multimedia came to the PC, the CD-ROMs, came this idea of computer-based training uh, with multimedia. And then, of course, the network has changed a lot of things, becoming the internet-based training and, and e-learning. Uh, uh, and, 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 and I'm claiming that, that the latest development is, is a kind of social media and, and open content. Uh, interesting with these are that all these paradigms live in the same time. None of them has died off. We still think and, and work on the drill and practice thing and, 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 and teaching programming is very fashionable in, in, in this field. But uh, <clears throat> I think we can find certain underlying paradigms or theories in there. Uh, I would say, say Simon Popper, who Philip was mentioning, somewhere between constructivism and social constructivism, uh, he was uh, working with Piaget and then went to MIT and, and, and was combining his work with artificial intelligence researchers and so on. But, but the teaching machine definitely is, is behaviorism, Pavlov, Skinner, uh, and then the social constructivism, Dewey and Vukotsky uh, are on the other end. And, and I, I have to say that I've been mo most interested in this other end, in, in my work, what we've been doing. Um, so that was the past, and what happens in the future in, in this field? Uh, before getting into that, I, I li really love this, uh, like this uh, uh, way of, 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 of saying about the future, or, or how, do we, how do we understand future? And, and, and this is something which is by, by Roy Amara. Uh, He's been saying that, that in, a, in a short run, in a short term, we overestimate the effects uh, of technology practically. And, and then in the long run, we underestimate. And I think this relates to everyone's work, what we have heard today. You may think that, that, that how people think about your <coughs> impact uh, to, to the society or to the world. And, and, and I think it's good to remember that, that overestimation in the short run and underestimate in the long run. So uh, what we think that will happen is linear, but what really happens is something which starts quite slow, or slower than we, we thought, and then it speeds up, and we make a wrong prediction how things will affect. <clears throat> I have one example of this, uh, which is a, uh, includes my work as well. Everybody knows Tim Berners-Lee, World Wide Web came in 1991. I would claim that in, in, in 2006 was kind of the year when the promises of the web were really becoming true. Uh, Wikipedia was five years old. It was really taking off in, in, in hundreds of languages. Google, even that it was found in 98 already, 2006 they bought YouTube, and the growth was huge. Uh, Facebook became public. It it's, was around for a few years earlier only for, for, for the university students, and then it became publicly accessible. Twitter was found as well in 2006. And from there, the, the, the speed been, been, been starting and, and, and we go quite far still with what it comes to, to this era of, of the web and internet from this perspective. <clears throat> I think Philip mentioned the future learning environment, which we started in 1998. And I want to show you a few things, what we did in that time. And we built an online learning environment with the with the various tools. There was a web top where you could share your own files. Other students could, could visit each other web tops 
take copies of the files they found from there. So it was a bit like a Dropbox in 98, sharing files, keeping your files in a one place related to your studies. Furthermore, <clears throat> there was a tool called knowledge building, uh, very much social media uh, already in that time. Uh, it was a discussion forum, but it was a quite specific dis discussion forum because we were using a specific knowledge types as we called them. And the idea was that when the students are studying with this kind of uh, dialogue, they, they, they will uh, kind of simulate scientific reasoning or, or expert way of working. They present their own theories and hypotheses, and then they, they try to find evidence from the, from, the from the sources, and then they come up with the conclusions. Starting with the problem, doing hypotheses, finding evidence, and getting to the conclusions. And we were guiding, guiding the students to, to have this kind of intellectual discussion on an online environment. And I think the idea was also, if, if you see today online discussions, all the trolling and, 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 and or, or to avoid all that, to keep it on a topic and, and keep it meaningful. <clears throat> Furthermore, we, we designed something called uh, a jamming, which was a bit like versioning system uh, for, for uh, working on design together. So, not a, I wouldn't compare it to the GitHub, but pretty much the same idea. You start with the certain design, in this case the kids were designing t-shirt, and then you can have different versions <coughs> and, and keep track of them. Um, maybe I show another example too of the same phenomena. Uh, who knows Steve Mann? Heard about the guy? My students know, <laughs> which is a good thing. Uh, he's the first guy who came up with the wearable computing or wearable com computers all in L. I have a picture of him here. Uh, this was the, the device he was carrying, a bit like a Google Classes in 1980s, where he could see pictures, the camera was, was shooting the environment, and then he could see the pictures, and, and there was added, added information, like augmented reality information into it. So <clears throat> he started this in 1980s. Pokemon Go, which I considered to be the first commercial successful application of, of mobile augmented reality came last year. We did something with, with, with the students in, in 2006, and very briefly I explained what it was. It was working, or it didn't work, it was a demo, it, was a, it wasn't even demo, it was a scenario which we played. Uh, it was using a mobile phone, and you could go around with the phone to look your environment. So you, 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 you use the video stream, you look around your environment, and what you can see suddenly there is a note left by other people. So very much a similar example you were saying, but the idea was that anybody may leave any kind of notes in any place. So if we would take now our phones, we could see notes in here and we could add notes in there. And I think it was an interesting uh, idea and demo which later uh, been implemented in a certain way with this augmented reality, at least information like a, like a recommendation of, of restaurants, but not from the point of view of anybody being allowed to add things in there. So if you are interested in to make an a, a environmental uh, information system, I'm quite sure that people would love to leave notes in, into spaces. Nobody have done that yet, that you could add there also, also notes. Okay, I will, I will con con conclude with the, with the few words of, of, of our research in the, in, the, in, the, in the last few years and, and what direction we are going. So, so of course, I'm not predicting the future, but I'm predicting what kind of research we do. I'm quite sure about that, that that's what we will do. And I guess that that will become the, 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 the future. Um, I'm quite convinced that the technology megatrends are listed here pretty well. It, the internet-based networks are not going away. They, 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 they make things possible. And of course, it becomes mobile. It becomes always accessible everywhere. Uh, growing computing capacity makes weird things, artificial intelligence and so on. And then the automation and, and robotics is, is the third mega trend, what, what we, uh, I guess most of us agree when it comes to computing and, and digital world. But this is probably the most 
important slide of my presentation because I know that all of you are also, also teaching and educators. Uh, and, and, and these things come partly from the, from the technology megatrends. Uh, education and learning never happens in a, in a vacuum. They, they work in a close collaboration with the society. As I was showing, the Skinner was with the certain ideas of, of science, of, of how people learn and, and trying out them. So the, the really uh, kind of mecha trend growing is the, the or interesting topic is the separation between formal and informal learning. And now the formal learning means this learning happening in a, in a university or institutional uh, context. Informal learning is something we do all the time. We check things from the Wikipedia, we may take courses online and, and so on. Uh, social environments, really, really important. And again, I don't only meet uh, a physical real world environments. I think there's a lot of work to do when and how we can expand the video conferencing to be something where we are like avatars or representation, photorealistic representations of us, us in a space. It's no more video conference, it's a, it's a spatial experience of the space. And, and I would love to see someone doing uh, research on, on, on taking a full scan of us and, and, and moving us to the Google Street View and walking over there. And that, that for sure will have an impact to learning. You can, you can truly be present and, 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 and work together and, and all the spatial information will be, will be transferred in there too. And then thirdly, analytics and, and reflection. Uh, and now I mean with this, not in a, in a computer science way, but using computers again to serve the people. That what kind of information we can give for the people to reflect on their learning. What have I learned? How I'm learning? What, should I could, what could I do better? And, and there, there's a really lot of possibilities of, 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 of kind of tracking what we do because most of our communications most of the things we do are mediated with the, with the computer technology. So we can track from there and help people to reflect on their own, own learning. <clears throat> so concluding, we get a nice matrix out of this, putting the technology megatrends and the learning megatrends, and then finding research questions from there. And I actually took a look of our latest publications, and, and, and I, I pick up four. And I can quite well relate them to the matrix. And, and, and from there, we see that there's also areas to explore more. Uh, the work is not yet done. Thank you very much for your attention.